let's talk about two special kind of variables in quantum mechanics these are position and momentum both of these are actually hermitian operators because their eigen values are real we can't have imaginary position vector position values we can't have imaginary momentum values and what's so special about them is their commutation relation which looks like this that x p minus p x you know as these are operators so ordering is important this is not like uh, x p and uh, uh, this is also x p we can't like uh, write like that and uh, this relation is not equal to zero which means that uh, we can't measure x and p that is position and momentum at the same time we can measure rather to be precise we can't measure x and px at the same time we can measure x and py at the same time we can measure x and pz at the same time we can measure z and px at the same time but not z and pz now here comes the how the state of a particle varies with time how it evolves with time now state is something which contains all the information about a particle so state is extremely important so if i know uh if i want to know the uh, the what about i mean uh, everything about one particle then i need to find out the state of that particle at this moment so i need also to know that um, after 5 minutes or 10 minutes the whereabouts of the particle so i need the time evolution of this state shy and it looks like i h cross del del t of shy equal to hamiltonian into shy this is the famous time dependent schrodinger equation and by solving this we can actually find out how shy varies with time remember newton's law uh, we are given f force equal to mass into acceleration so mass acceleration means d to x dt square when you solve this we can find out the position how the position is changing with time because we was interested in the position of the substance of the system with now i mean with us uh, for subsequent values of time so this is similar to the classical mechanics that uh, if this is for classical mechanics this is for quantum mechanics so as we are interested about how a uh, system changes how a particle changes its uh, position or momentum with respect to time which means how it evolves in time we are going to define a time evolution operator now uh, there is a quick introduction of uh, how we treat time in quantum mechanics it's not an observable it's rather a parameter in quantum mechanics it is uh, not an observable means it is not like position or momentum etc so we cannot associate any hermitian operator with the time in relativity theory space and time were treated on equal footing but in relativistic quantum field theory the position is downgraded to the parameter level and then it is treated on equal footing with the time because time is a parameter now suppose when we think about uh, a, a quantum mechanical system which is uh, in a state uh, alpha say suppose and at a time t equal to t0 where t0 is any initial time where uh, i mean at t0 i have started the measurement on the system and on that time the particle is at state alpha so at a later time the state becomes alpha comma t t0 is the initial time and now time has evolved into another time t so my state is now alpha t 
So, how we define time evolution of a state? So, this is my state at an initial time t 0. So, state is alpha t 0 and after time evolution the state is now alpha t and the evolution operator is uh, determined or defined as u, it is written as u say and which is uh, both function of t and t 0, which is basically a function of time. So, when we are applying the time evolution operator u on this initial state alpha t 0, we will get the final state alpha t. And in terms of psi, because we are using psi throughout as uh, to describe the state of the particle. So, if initially suppose at t equal to 0, when the measurements are just started, suppose the state is then psi x 0, here t equal to 0. And when we apply this time evolution operator u, remember we have always used this hat on top of the operator to denote that it is an operator indeed. So, this time evolution operator operating on this initial state psi x 0 gives me psi x t for uh, I mean after a certain time t and this u operator is called propagator. u satisfies a particular property, this is a unitary operator, so it satisfies u dagger u equal to identity matrix and uh, uh, of course u u dagger equal to identity also. This actually means that um, it maps the Hilbert space into itself. Now, this propagator depends on the particular system on which I am interested and how the system undergoes some interactions, how it behaves when it, uh, it is doing some interactions. But this u operator does not depend on the state psi and this is uh, what we call the linearity of this propagator. So, for the propagator our Schrodinger equation looks like this, it is i h cross del del t of u hat psi x 0 equal to Hamiltonian h u psi x 0. And as we know Hamiltonian does not contain here any explicit time dependence. For example, H is summation of kinetic energy p square by twice m plus some potential energy and potential is a function of x. For example, if we think about harmonic oscillator, then the potential energy term will be half m omega square x square, which means this Hamiltonian contains no explicit time dependence, no explicit time factor is written either on p or uh, in uh, the position x. And so, for any function psi x 0, the time evolution of this operator looks like i h cross del del t of u equal to Hamiltonian into u. Now, as I have just mentioned that this Hamiltonian h is uh, time independent, which means that it does not have any explicit time dependence. You cannot see any time factor t explicitly written on the Hamiltonian. And for that, if we solve this equation, we will get that, that this uh, propagator or the time evolution operator will be like equal to e to the power minus i Hamiltonian t by h cross. So, if we want to make u dagger u, we will find that u dagger u is equal to identity.